Supply. From the Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin Resort in Orlando, Florida, it's The Cube. Covering Splunk.com 2016. Brought to you by Splunk. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and John Wall. Well, welcome back, live here on theCUBE. We are in Orlando, Florida, live on the show floor at .conf 2016, along with John Furrier. I'm John Walls, theCUBE continues our coverage here. Been here for a couple of days, and we'll be wrapping up a little bit later on this afternoon. It's free keynotes live uh, tomorrow. We have with us a keynote star from today, Andy Mann, who is the chief uh, Chief Technology Advocate. I knew I wasn't going to get that out. <laughs> Sorry, Andy. Uh, thank you for being here with us. And John Rooney, who's the Senior Director of Product Marketing at Splunk. So thank you both for being here. Thank you. Um, first off, just your take on what you see, what you feel, the, the vibe that you got going on here. I mean, John and I have been talking about it for a couple of days. Seems to us very positive, very upbeat. A lot of yeah. good spirit going on here. Your take. Yeah, look, I, I mean, I'll, I'll jump in. There's a great vibe at this show. I mean, the, it's, it's something I, I've uh, understood from this company is the customers are such part of our lifeblood and they love to be here, they love to be with each other, they love to learn about stuff, they love to tell each other how good things are going. When they listen to the keynotes, you can really feel the buzz going. I mean, yesterday's keynote with Doug, also the one with Shy and our products team, was just really positive. Like, uh, coming out of there, all the buzz was like, oh wow, I got to get that, I'm willing to try that. Let's get that installed, how soon can we have it? So people are just really into what we do and the results we get, and that gives us a lot of energy. Yeah, John, yeah, you're Yeah, this is my, uh, so I've been at Splunk four and a half years, so this is my fifth uh, user conference. And um, you know, obviously we've gotten bigger, the scale has gotten bigger, uh, but the spirit's still there. It's still the fundamental spirit around you know, our users, our customers, pushing us to do more, telling us about uh, how they're using the product. And yeah. I think um, it's, it's been a really great uh, kind of growth experience of seeing how we're still bigger, but uh, you know, the, the heart of that, of that vibe at the, at the conference is still pretty much yeah. the same. And you guys are getting a lot of new customers and new Splunkers in yep. the customer base, yep. blending into that culture that you guys have seen to, seem to preserve the work hard, play hard. Certainly, the keynotes are packed, the hallways are packed with people coming out, running to the sessions, the sessions are packed, the party's rocking. Yeah. I mean, I saw more adults going on rides last night at Disney, <laughs> yeah. going, you know, why I was one of them, but I'm not a customer, but yeah. people smiling, a lot of bonding, high fives, just, that's a cultural tenant, isn't it? Yeah, it's, you know, it's something that we're really thoughtful about in terms of uh, and hiring and growing and how we, you know, how we treat our customers. We, you know, really tried to not let go of the things from the early days, even you know, beyond when I started. So it's, it's so like let's like, jump into the product product conversation sure. because this is where the the rubber hits the road. Yep. Okay, put all that aside. Great community. End of the day, people's jobs are on the line. Yep. Digital transformation is happening. Splunk went from a tool to a platform, now a fabric. Yep. That's not the way it's supposed to go by the playbook of of tech startups. It's supposed to be platform tools and then world dominance. You start as a tool, turn into a platform. Now, that's really an interesting progression. Yeah, I mean, I, but I mean, a tool that's turned into a platform. Well, I mean, I think the way we looked at it is, you know, uh, going back, you know, three, four years, we wanted to make sure that the the fundamental things that Splunk did well around the, the data ingestion, the correlation, the visualization, we made sure that that was a platform that was extensible. That was something that not only uh, we could build on, uh, but our partners could build on. And then over time, what we found, the more we talked to customers, the more we heard about how they were using the product, yeah. we wanted to focus on, okay, what are, the, what are the couple pillars of the business? And that's why we really doubled down around uh, IT operations and security, and to build out these solutions, like, like uh, enterprise security and, and IT service intelligence, that are hyper-focused on those users, their pain points, how to, how to deliver value to Solve them. Solve a problem. Absolutely, that are problem focused, but still take advantage of everything great with the platform. So, I, I, first of all, it's, it's a testament to all the companies and startups out there that are trying to figure out the future. If you just solve a problem, now that you had a growth strategy and there's a business reason why you did that, yep. I get that. But an observation, we go to a lot of events, so this yep. year there will be over 100 different events. There's a pattern emerging of the successful companies. Okay. Here it is. The ones that I see that are doing well and disrupting, yeah. but yet innovating, they do it completely opposite of the way it used to work. And so it's almost a reverse, and, and, and that's kind of come from this whole DevOps ethos. Yeah. The way you used to do it actually is not really the way you want to do it in the future. So IT guys have this challenge. Yeah. How do you keep the lights on? How do you maintain operations? But I got to start retransforming my workflows, my work streams, my personnel, yes. my tasks, almost doing it opposite. 
Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of what Andy talked about at the, at the first part of the keynote. This, this notion that there's this big change, this big transformation driven by everything from uh, cloud to microservices uh, to hybrid environments, and all of a sudden the job of the IT professional looks different than it did 15 years ago. Um, however, is the, you know, is the mission ultimately different? Like, isn't your job to you know, deliver value and run that business? I think Andy made a great point in the keynote this morning that like, this idea that IT was somehow a separate entity from the business, I think is a misnomer. And I think it's, you know, it's becoming well, more- Well, certainly into it's, fabric, it's into the fabric because IT's yeah. in, software's every part of the business, yeah. so IT then has to horizontally embed in. Yeah. Fundamentally, right? Yeah, there's no technology division of every company. Like, yeah. every company is, it, it's, 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 it's contained within that, so. Yeah. So talk about conventional wisdom, guys, because you know you hear this a lot. Conventional wisdom: I have to have top of rack with switches, and I got to yep. do all this. Cloud busted that, that big time. Data analytics: This is what happened. Yeah. Well, I'm not, I want to know what's happening and what will happen. Yeah. New dynamics around data, new security. Yep. The perimeter's dead. We all know that. So a lot of the conventional wisdom tenants are all getting thrown out the window. Absolutely. Which ones do you highlight right now that you think are the most? Um, uh, vulnerable or have already been kind of you know, demystified, if you will, in terms of the conventional wisdom, how you're supposed to do IT operations, how you're supposed to do security with data. Yeah, I, I mean, the common, I can't remember who said it, uh, but the common wisdom is frequently neither, right? Uh, so it's neither common nor wisdom. Um, and so and it's one of the things that Splunk has been really good at is disrupting and doing things differently. I mean, you look at everything from our, 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 the way we collect and store data, the way we price, the way we work with our customers, the way we work with partners in a really open ecosystem. Um, you know, these things are all, in a lot of ways, contrary to whatever the common wisdom might have been, the conventional wisdom. Um, I think within IT operations, uh, the conventional wisdom was change causes problems. And that's, that's got to go. And that's part of the DevOps philosophy as well. Um, and I certainly believe that change is the only constant. And if we're not changing, then we're dying. Um, we've got to get rid of this notion that IT ops needs to stop people doing stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to hold back. No, I can't do that, you'll need to raise a service ticket. No, I can't do that because we need to wait for a change window. Mm -hmm. the, it's just not acceptable anymore. We've yeah. got to accept change and, and, and love change. Well, we had Yelp on earlier today and they said mm -hmm. fundamentally, it's all about software everywhere. Yep. And automation of that software to get rid of some of those objections. Change window? What? I mean, <laughs> Use containers and publish it to you know, a scheduler. Yep, I mean ultimately if the big driver of this is businesses want to move faster, they want to do more and they want to learn faster, you can't do that stuff manually. That's not, that's no longer eyeballs and things written on sticky notes. It has to be, you know, infrastructure as code. It has to be yeah. software driven. It has to be data driven. Or tape, um, don't turn this off. Absolutely. Ah, yes. How many yeah. times have you seen that in a data center? Uh, so yeah. ultimately, all the, you know, the ditch digging is done by the technology so that the people are freed up to actually add value. Right, and that's, you know, whether you're talking about from, uh, you know, things around automation or even what we're doing with machine learning, right? If you think about machine learning, we're not replacing to, uh, uh, security or IT practitioners. What we're actually doing is, uh, you know, bringing the, the answers and the information to a much more crystallized point so that they're better prepared to do their job. But they don't have to do all the, the hauling of the information and, and, the, and the, you know, chopping of wood to get there, which doesn't, you know, doesn't scale very well. It doesn't allow you to do what you need to do at the speed in which businesses need to work. You know, this is a question more along the lines of, of how you go about your business, not what you do. Yeah. Um, but because change or this ability or, or I guess a willingness to accept new paradigms, yeah. new visions. I mean, is that something that's embedded uh, in Splunk in terms of your hiring and the kind of people you look for? I mean, what is it about Splunk you think that differentiates you from others in the tech sector when it comes to that kind of employee perspective? Um, certainly as, as a relatively new employee, you know, I've only been just over 12 months at Splunk. Um, and going through the hiring process was actually different. I've been hired for a lot of different roles in my time, and going through the hiring process was different, very different. It was in a large way structured, and different, and I've interviewed other candidates since I've joined as well. And to a large degree, it's structured so that different people are asking different questions of the same candidate. Some will focus on technical skills, some will focus on experience, some will focus on cultural fit. And we have very you know, distinctly described cultural values, and we'll often get, uh, older timers, if you will, or uh, interviewing for the cultural fit. 
so that the people who know deeply what the culture of Splunk has been continue to reinforce that. Uh, and I think that's actually very powerful. A couple of things to highlight, you guys have the Enterprise Splunk IT Service Intelligence product update, then security, yep. enterprise security, user behavior analytics, and on and on, continue to add to the yep. product suite. So I want to ask both of you guys, what's the biggest thing you'd like to share with the audience, and I'd like to know from your perspectives, what's changed most with the data? Because the data continues to be the most valuable asset for the customer. We had the CTO on from Splunk earlier talking about how you know, you can start to separate data into classes and use the machine learning differently, time series, it's different than yep. relational databases. He's got a great vision on that, I think he's right on the money. But yep. this means a completely different view of how you have data and the value of that data, putting it to work. What's changed this year? What should people be thinking about? Just general comments around how important that data is. Yeah, I mean, I, I, mean, I think I'd go back to sort of the machine learning theme. Like the, the paradigm for working with Splunk from the beginning was get it all in one place and ask questions of it, right? But it's, that, that's, that, you know, and that's still massively powerful. It's still a powerful, um, it's still a powerful uh, use case for a lot of customers. But I think there's a huge opportunity from the analytics side to say, well, how about your data starts to tell you some things? How about your data proactively you know, does some pattern recognitions, does some predictive things, does some threshold uh, analysis, and now all of a sudden you uh, can expand the scope of the type of data you put in. Essentially you're, you're gaining this scale that you wouldn't normally have because the software is doing more of the work. It's not just answering questions, it's coming up with the questions for you, which is a very different thing, and I think it's the cusp of a whole new uh, paradigm for us. And the data sharing dynamic, is that coming into play? Yeah. And I think this, you know, you talked about was this year, uh, we see the rise of containers, the rise of microservices, the increasing adoption of cloud, of teams working together with DevOps kind of modes and variations on that theme. And I think this fragmentation is fundamentally changing the way that we need to manage and use and share data. When you've got such amazing and such a diverse fragmentation of resources, sources, applications, infrastructure, and everything, including customer data, and increasingly executives want business data in that mix, I believe you've got to have one source and everyone on the same page. Can you achieve ag agility with data or agile data, data native, whatever you want to call it? I mean, we're coming down to that conversation, aren't we? I mean, you guys are providing this data agility, yeah, I mean, I think data native environment. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the I mean, notion, I just made those terms up, the but. principle of kind of data-driven decision-making has lived around forever and probably, you know, going back in the NBA textbooks for time out of mind, but it's just, it, had, it hadn't been feasible before. It's been really hard to make data-driven decision-makings if you can't measure, you know, if you can't, you can't manage what you can't measure. And I think, you know, we're now, Splunk is, you know, part of this new generation of solutions and te technologies that, are that now it enables you to even be able to make those decisions, enables the, that type of discussion. And so all of a sudden, uh, organizations that may, may have worked off of hunches of the data or subsets of the data or the loudest voice in the room, you, know, you can't argue with the data, but you have to be able to, to structure the argument. And I think we're, we're an enabler for that. John, I want to ask you, what's the biggest disruption in IT operation or IT in general? Is it personnel, technology, process? All the above. I mean, I mean, I would say it's, you know, from a DevOps standpoint, and Andy lives this all, all the time, uh, talking to our customers and talking to the industry, it's the cultural change around DevOps. And it's just the notion of, you know, the traditional, I'm IT, my job is stability, um, don't break anything, keep things cool, and I'm Dev, and I want to push, I want to push and build and push and push and push, and it was, you know, snake and mongoose. Yeah. And I think this <laughs> new world where, no, they're working together, you're all rowing in the same direction, and, and these general principles of, sh of, 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 of working off of the same data set, working, you know, taking shared tasks and that empathy, and you know, tools can, innate, can help that, but it's not the driver itself. It's a very much of, of a change management or cultural thing. And yeah, Andy, you talk to customers all the time. Yeah, look, very much so. And I think the, the idea of sharing and, and collaborating together, you know, historically we've been tasked with different things. Operations, DBAs, security, uh, development, had different goals, different MBOs. And of course they're going to work differently. Um, bringing them all together, having this collaborative attitude where they communicate with each other, that's so much different from how it has been in the past. Mm -hmm. And that's enabling this agility, 
Yeah. Because again, they're working together to common goals, they're using common data to make decisions rather than uh, making things up and having opinions, yeah. and that's, that's a massive change. Yeah. Yeah. So just take 10 seconds apiece. You always talk to uh, uh, customers, people. You know, they go back to their bosses, what did you learn at the show, right? What did you get out of the show? So you tell us, 10 seconds, if you would, John, Andy, what are you getting out of the show? What are you going to take back with you, back, back to work? Sure, I mean, I think, uh, I, I'll, I'll reinforce what I was talking about before, that um, we're on the cusp of making analytics real. And, and having more of a, less, we're moving away from kind of the passive, you know, uh, you know data, data management, data farming worlds to having that data start to work for you. And, and having that leverage point really drive the business in new ways. And we're, 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 we're in the beginning of that journey now. Andy? And for me, it's, it's the demand from all of our customers for this DevOps thing, right? Yeah. Uh, the reaction from the keynote, the full rooms at all of our breakout sessions led by customers and partners and us, uh, the buzz that I'm hearing, the, the attraction at the booths that we're showing off our capabilities, uh, how all our customers are working with DevOps. Um, this is a transformation in flux, but this is a transformation that is only going to grow. Well, you mentioned the stage, you look good up there, man. I mean, you own that stage. Just that was, <laughs> Thank that you was very nice. much, I that appreciate John it. Andy, thanks for being with us. Thank, Thank you, you so much, nice. Thank, Thank you. you. We continue our coverage here live from Orlando on theCUBE. Not provide effective detection and response. Skilled experts are hard to find. Organizations lack threat intelligence that is applicable and actionable. At Herjavec Group, we are laser focused on protecting your data and your business. Information security is what we do. Live.